Good afternoon. All of you are welcome to the course Manufacturing Processes 2. We are continuing module 3 which is machinability and today's lecture number 3.3 .3, and topic is conventional cutting tool materials. Now, what the content of the lecture today that is specific instructional objectives, visualization of the needs and chronological development of cutting tool materials and also this will enable the students to state the characteristics and applications characteristics and applications of commonly used cutting tool materials. Now, in the field of cutting tool material lot of development have taken place. So, today we shall cover I shall cover only the conventional cutting tools which are commonly used you know in all over the world and next lecture we will cover the advanced cutting tool materials. So, today's cutting tool materials will be that we covered high speed steel, stellite, syn cut carbides and plain ceramics. Now, you can see here what can be the role of development of cutting tool materials on productivity of machining. Here is a plot this shows the metal removal rate or productivity in machining say mild steel with year say from 1910 to 2000 and beyond that. Here you see the productivity has increased almost exponentially from 1910 to 2000. So, very rapid improvements are taking place from recent past. Now, in 1910 it was high speed steel which could machine material only at 25 meter per minute. You know that the productivity is a function of cutting velocity and feed mainly cutting velocity. More velocity means more productivity. In 1930 advent of cemented carbides made by brazing allowed cutting velocity 60 meter per minute. In 1965 up to 80 meter per minute. Now, all of a sudden in 1980 the cutting velocity went up to 250 meter per minute through advent of coated carbides and 2000 high performance ceramics that enabled reach 750 meter per minute which is really tremendous cutting velocity and which produces very high productivity. Now, here you can see the chronological development of the cutting tool materials. There is a saying that where there is a will there is a way and where there is a will where there is a need there will be will and where there is a will there will be development or creation. Now, here we have made a chart you can see year wise chronological need developed and development of the cutting tool to face the need. For example, in 1905 in 1905 the tool material high speed steel was introduced by F W Taylor. It is a really great breakthrough in the history of cutting tool material development. That time the other cutting tool material could machine hardly at say 10 to 5 to 10 meter per minute, but high speed steel enabled machining say material like mild steel very common material up to 30 meter per minute. What are the major constituents or the composition of high speed steel? High speed steel is termed as 1841, 18 percent tungsten, 4 percent chromium, 1 percent vanadium and carbon 0.7 percent rest iron ferrum. Now, this automobile industry came up in large way around 1910 which demanded some more improved cutting tool materials which can machine materials faster than high speed steel. Yes, a material namely stellite was developed in around 1913 and this stellite is a cast alloy it is produced by casting simply, but this is a this is composed of cobalt, chromium, tungsten and similar materials this will be discussed in appropriate time. Now, you see the world war one now the great world war one and world war two happened to be the sources or the um, milestones for development of science and technology. The great improvements in science and technology have taken place during the world war II, especially in second world war in all respects. Around 1920 high speed steel was improved 
drastically by addition of vanadium 2 to 4 percent which provided more heat resistance and wear resistance. Then cobalt hot strength and hot hardness which was added 5 to 12 percent in tungsten and cobalt uh, tungsten and chromium etcetera. In another high species this is not cobalt this is chromium. Now aircraft there is a boom in aircraft industries in 1930 there is a tremendous demand for machining materials at higher speed and that time there was a bre great breakthrough another breakthrough in the history of science and technology of cutting tools and novel tool material namely cemented carbide was developed in around 1930 and it is claimed that it has been developed either Germany or Russia or Union, Soviet Union uh, or USA but there is a doubt really where it was invented might be that it developed simultaneously in all these three uh, advanced, advanced countries cemented carbide but that time it was confined to only machining of cast iron. Then during the second world war around 1940 and above the carbide for steels were developed. The cemented carbide that was developed in 1930 was suitable for cast iron machining cast iron which normally produces short chips. The chip tool contact length is very small, the duration is very short, so temperature was not very high. But in machining steel lot of temperature is developed because of continuous contact between the continuously flowing chip with the rake surface. This temperature is detrimental for the tool very much which is you know softens the tool and aggravates the rate of growth of wear. In 1940 a special type of carbide called composite carbide has been developed for machining steels at reasonably good speed. In 1950 around there is a need from chemical, petrochemical and nuclear industries as well as polymer industries to have better cutting tool material and what was the developments? High speed steel with high vanadium, molybdenum, cobalt and carbon. This created a very good quality of high speed steel enabling machining at speed more than 50 meter per minute compared to 30 meter per minute when it was introduced. At the same time in 1950 plain ceramics like alumina or silicon nitride were developed and synthetic diamond. So diamond a single crystal diamond was found to work very well in some machining activities and the synthetic diamond was also developed in around 1950 for some application. 1960 is another breakthrough because that time jet engines, space programs and all these things demanded a very fast machining tool and which can machine varieties of machine materials and that time ceramics and sarmets were developed various types. 1970 that is another small breakthrough the carbide tools, cement carbide tools were coated by various materials, powder metallurgical process, high speed steel, the quality of high speed steel was enhanced by manufacturing by powder metallurgical process and then simultaneously polycrystalline diamond is another kind of diamond tool has been developed for wide application. Now in 1980 defense and super alloys like titanium alloy and nickel based alloys which were very difficult to machine by conventional cutting tool materials. So special cutting tool materials had to be developed you know and that is really advanced cutting tool materials these are like cubic boron nitride coated high speed steel and cylon this kind of advanced cutting tool materials came into being in 1980. 1986 here is also a remarkable time where high performance ceramics because ceramic cutting tools are unique but it has got certain weakness also and that so overcoming the weakness some high performance ceramic cutting tools have been developed to machine at very very high speed. In 1990 onward just in time that is very quick production very quick production in preset time had to be done on some exotic materials. So very special and capable cutting tool material were demanded and the people were successful to develop and use diamond coated carbides. The cemented carbides now it is just been coated with diamond thin film of diamond. Now let us see the high speed steel. High speed steel uh, this is so named high speed steel because when it was introduced this high speed steel could machine uh, the material like my steel at the highest speed up to 15, 30 meter per minute. That time in 1905 
this this tool material could machine at a higher speed that is why it is called high speed steel but now presently the amongst all the cutting tool materials high speed steel is possibly the lowest cutting speed type of tool material it can be used at the lowest cutting speed but for the honor of the inventor of high speed steel that time it is still named as high speed steel because it made a breakthrough but at present it is not machining at that high speed possibly it is machining material like my steel at the lowest possible speed now what are the basic composition of high speed steel tungsten 18% chromium 4% then uh, carbon 0.7% vanadium 1% rest iron now tungsten and chromium were added into iron for improvement in hardness and hot hardness wear resistance abrasion resistance then vanadium for further wear resistance and hot hardness but the cutting velocity for machining low carbon steels was 20 to 30 meter per minute that means even with such good composition high speed steel could machine materials like my steel only from 20 to 30 meter per minute which is really very very low in the scale of today but high, though high speed steels were invented and introduced long back around 1905 with a limited quality but interesting part of this is these high primitive tool high speed steel are still utilized nowadays and this will continue over another 50 years maybe why why high speed steel being so primitive being machine capable to machine only at 20 to 30 meter per minute are still utilized when high performance ceramic diamond and other modern cutting tools have been developed there are reasons where are there they are used very useful when where the tool is slender when the cutting tool is slender say like a rod then it is subject to lot of bending and vibration so this kind of tool will be subject lot of tensile stress and bending stress so modern cutting tool materials cannot sustain that kind of stresses or bending moment or vibration like the drills long slender drills reamers n mill cutters a small diameter or even medium some diameter medium size diameter they have still made of mostly made of high speed steel but some of them are made by carbide also but mostly uh, high speed steel now high speed steel are also used where tool geometry is very complex so complex that it is very difficult to manufacture such kind of cutting tools where the carbides and ceramics cannot be used for the purpose because carbide ceramics are very difficult to process like machining and other things but high speed steel can be machined just like any other steel so the complex geometry type of cutting tools like drills with the double floats gear cutters like hobs or gear shaping cutters milling cutters the broach broaching tools etc are still mostly made of high speed steel the form tools are made of high speed steel the tool needs high tens transverse of strength or bending strength and toughness say when there is a say intermittent cutting or interrupted cutting shock loaded cutting then there will lot of vibration and shock loads which cannot be tolerated by the modern cutting tool materials like carbides and ceramics which are basically brittle so under such situations say in interrupted cutting and shock initiated cutting high speed steel tools are very appropriate another case where the machine tool fixture tool and work system does not permit high velocity maybe the machine fixture tool work system is not strong and rigid enough because of many reasons maybe small maybe old maybe a, diff, a cheaper type or some problems in such cases the velocity cannot be raised very high and when the velocity cannot be increased then high speed steel is the best cutting tool material now here you can see the the high speed steel was introduced i told you around 1905 but and it is still getting used but don't think that by this time it has not been improved lot of improvements have taken place in the properties and qualities performance of high speed steel by the last century what were the improvements 
performance of high speed steel have been improved through raising strength, mechanical strength like tensile strength, bending strength, etc., hot hardness, wear resistance for improvement in to life and, and allowing this tool to be used at higher speed. How these properties can be induced by refining the microstructure, which also improves the properties, mechanical and physical properties, adding large amount of vanadium and cobalt, say around 5 to 12 percent vanadium for wear resistance and heat resistance. What for cobalt? Cobalt for hot hardness, so that the hardness of high speed steel is retained even at high temperature around say 400 or 500 centigrade. As such, high speed steel can withstand temperature up to 600 degree centigrade. So, and corresponding velocity is around 30 meter per minute, but by adding vanadium and cobalt, it can withstand higher temperature, hence higher cutting velocity. Making high speed steel with high vanadium, molybdenum, cobalt and carbon, this really created a very good grade of high speed steel, which can be used for very complex type of cutting tools. Making high speed steel through powder metallurgical process since 1970. Now, this if the high speed steel, which is normally produced by say rot in the rolling, now this is produced by powder metallurgical process and that enable it to get very fine microstructure and hence properties. And last in 1978 or 80, these high speed steel tools have been coated by physical vapor deposition technique and the coating material is normally say uh, titanium nitride, titanium carbonitride, aluminum, titanium nitride and so on. So, still research is going on to improve the performance and quality of high speed steel. Now, the grades of high speed steel available for common use. You have seen that through the century, lot of changes have taken place in the composition properties and applications of the high speed steel. Now, they have been graded for different applications. For example, T1, T4, T6, these are few. There are, there are a few more, I have given only few which are more useful. Couple use T1, T4, T6, they are basically having carbon percentage 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, much lower, but main alloying element is tungsten. Chromium is for hardness and wear resistance, vanadium very low amount 1, 1 or 2 percent, cobalt maybe 5, later on 5 to 12 percent cobalt have been added to enhance hot hardness and hot strength of high speed steel. Later on, during the second world war, there is a tremendous shortage of tungsten. So, there is a quest for substitute of tungsten and it was found that molybdenum could be partially a substitute of tungsten, it is cheaper also. So, combination of tungsten 6 percent and molybdenum together was almost equivalent to 18 percent tungsten. This is another grade called M grade which is uh, which possesses molybdenum, chromium same amount vanadium with a large amount and cobalt the 5 percent, 8 percent. Now, this molybdenum enhanced the hardness and enhanced the toughness, but at the cost of hardness. Hardness has been slightly reduced, but toughness have substantially improved by molybdenum. So, presently two kinds of high speed steels are basically available. Uh, say in material wise basic material one is tungsten based other one is tungsten and molybdenum combined based. In addition to that lot of you know coating and all these things are done. Now, come to the next tool stalite. This tool stalite is a novel material was developed in 1913 maybe 1914 and this is a cast is a produced by casting not powder metallurgical process or other process, but it does not contain any iron it is composed of cobalt 40 to 50 percent, chromium 22 to 30 percent, 32 percent, tungsten 14 to 19 percent and carbon up to 2 percent. All these materials taken together have been melted and cast into the form of tool bits, which were then braced on the tool shank and used for cutting. Now, this was definitely better than high speed steel at this moment, so far as productivity is concerned. It could be used at a higher speed or for a longer time. Here you see that is stalite, which is cast alloy of this one, m compared to high speed steel, stalite is more hot strong, that is retain strength at high temperature, tough, tough, that is can stand shock and vibration, heat resistant, 
then high speed steel, but even such good tool material became obsolete within 15 years, within 10 to 15 years. Why? For two reasons, for poor grindability. Unlike high speed steel, steelite was very difficult to resharpen and resharpen after wear and tear, the cutting tool need to be resharpened of the cutting edges by grinding process. But grindability of steelite is so poor that resharpening is, was very, very difficult and the cost was gradually increasing. So, this problem was faced by the people and they were tolerating for some reason, but as soon as a very novel tool material cemented carbide came into being, then this use of steelite had been totally stopped. Now, this sintered cemented carbide, sintered carbide also called cemented carbide tools, this is came in around 1930. This is really a very great breakthrough in the history of cutting tool material in last decade. This is a powder metallurgical process produced in inserts or bits uh, by manufactured by powder metallurgical process. So, what are their mixing powders of tungsten carbide, cobalt and some additive. The powders are properly mixed and then there is a briquetting or compacting in a die and die with the help of punch and it was fired or what is called sintering at suitable temperature and soaking time, maybe around 1200 degree centigrade for half an hour. Now, based, there are basically two categories of cemented carbides, this powder metallurgically produced carbide tools. One is called single carbide, other one is called double or multiple or together called composite carbide. Now, what is single carbide? Single carbide, it has got only tungsten carbide and cobalt. Tungsten carbide grains of size say about 1 to 20 micron was you know mixed with cobalt powder and then it was sintered cobalt being softened and it really used as a binder. So, cobalt gives strength and toughness and tungsten carbide grains give wear resistance and heat resistance. Tungsten carbide grains and uh, the cobalt was used 5 to 10 percent, tungsten carbide 90 to 95 percent. So, the binder was 5 to 10 percent only. Now, the performance tool life became 2 to 3 times of that of high speed steel. So, productivity enhanced by more than say 250 percent in machining steels. Now, what are the applications? This is a, it has got very, very wide application. What are those machining, cast iron? brass, bronze, etcetera at velocity 40 to 80 meter per minute. Now, here one thing to be noted, though it was a very novel material made a break, great um, breakthrough, but this was suitable for materials which produce short chips, short and discontinuous chips which do not stay or slide over the tool surface and does not make much temperature. But when this tool was attempted to be used in machining steel ductile material, the continuous chips were formed and that made bulk contact continuously over the rake surface. As a result, lot of heat was generated and this high temperature because of high heat caused lot of problems in this cutting tool. Mainly at such high cutting temperature, the cutting tool started wearing very fast because of adhesion and diffusion of the cobalt from the tool to the steel or chip and carbon also. So, this single carbide was very good for say short chip forming materials like cast iron, brass, bronze etcetera, but not for steel. Then composite carbide, this is really a breakthrough, another breakthrough within breakthrough and this was suitable for steels. What is the composition compared to single carbide, here you see that tungsten carbide content has been reduced from 70 to 70 to 80 percent, cobalt has been reduced from 4 to 8 percent. Then what is the rest? Rest is a gamma phase is a mix of 8 to 12 percent weight percent of titanium carbide, tantalum carbide, titanium nitride, hafnium nitride, hafnium carbide and similar materials. Say so, this kind of materials are more. Now, why these materials are added? Because these materials like titanium carbide, tantalum carbide, titanium nitride, etcetera are more heat and diffusion resistant than tungsten carbide. So, while machining steel, this element, these materials 
titanium carbide titanate which are very stable chemically stable heat resistant and diffusion resistant they prevented this they not prevented they reduced the rate of growth of diffusion wear and adhesion wear which was the main problem in machining steels so this material has been excellent for machining the steels which produce continuous chips and high temperature compared to single carbide this high this double carbides again are less tough so they are not suitable for impact or interrupted machining but more resistance to crater wear by adhesion and diffusion so this is very good for steel application machining steels at velocity from 50 to 120 meter per minute for soft steels like mild steel 120 meter per minute for little stronger steels or harder steels say around 50 meter per minute but this can be used for intermittent cutting also light intermittent cutting now there is another great mixed carbide it is already stated that material like titanium carbide titanium nitride titanium carbonitride are very stable because of high negative energy of formation and they are heat and wear resistive they reduce or they resist the diffusion addition wear built up edge formation so a mixed type of carbide have been produced by mixing titanium carbide of 5 to 25 percent into tungsten carbide and cobalt that is single carbide so this will add the hardness and wear resistance but at the cost of toughness so titanium carbide will add wear resistance and hardness okay but the toughness will slightly fall now what are the applications larger titanium content about 25 percent for finishing now what are the characteristics of finishing finishing work is normally done at high speed so there is a chance high temperature at high temperature titanium carbide is very good it is more heat resistive and stable at high temperature at high speed and temperature diffusion wear and similar thing takes place so titanium carbide suits Tit this finishing work the form of the cutting edge is very important for quality and titanium carbide helps retain the geometry and sharpness of the cutting tool by reducing the wear and tear of the cutting tool on the other hand lesser amount of titanium carbide maybe 5 to 10 percent content is used for bulk machining where the cutting force is large but cutting velocity that is temperature is low so there titanium carbide is not that much required now come to gradation of carbides as you have heard the different types of carbides are available have been developed have been made available targeting suitability of machining for different work materials now according to iso the all the carbide tools this part of metallurgy produce cemented carbide tools have been graded into three forms p m k grade p the color code is green m <coughs> sorry yellow and k red what does it mean p stands for machining ductile materials for machining long chip forming common materials like plain carbon steel and low alloy steels so material should be ductile but soft m m sorry k now let us say k for machining short chipping ferrous and non ferrous materials and non metals these are basically single carbide with little less additive and this is suitable for cast iron and similar materials sorry now the m1 is suitable for machining ductile materials but harder materials for machining long or short chip forming ferrous materials these are suitable for stainless steel austenite steel <coughs> nickel steel and similar materials remember within p it is further graded by some number say p5 p10 p20 p30 p40 smaller number means it is harder and larger number means tougher so with increase in toughness the number increases similarly amk also graded k5 k10 k20 k30 k40 and so on k510 means those are harder and k40 is very tough now this shows uh, some you know typical 
carbide tools. This can be square, this can be triangular, this can be hollow, this can be solid, it can be a different shape like this. And the patterns that you see here, those are made for built up, no, sorry, not built up edge, for these patterns are given for giving you know, additional strength, edge strength and this chip breaking effect and all other things and com compound rake, negative rake, positive rake together for these purposes. Now, come to plain ceramics. Now, ceramic is a heat resistive and refractory material. So, the, when we talk about ceramic as a cutting tool material, we mainly refer to alumina and silicon nitride. More popularly, alumina, plain ceramics, the only ceramics. Now, why alumina or silicon nitride have been targeted? Why they have been looked into? Because these two materials have got unique properties, some unique properties which are essential for cutting tool materials. For example, for example, say the plain ceramic like alumina, like alumina, advantageous properties are very high hardness that is abrasion resistant. So, it will reduce wear, abrasion wear, high hot hardness. So, form stability, this will hold the strength and hardness of the material, tool material even at a high temperature. So, the, it will not undergo plastic deformation easily. Chemical stability. So, this will not react unfavorably or undesirably with the tool material or the environment to that extent. Anti welding. So, this is inert to welding and less diffusivity. So, this is very good character because of less diffusivity, diffusion, where this can be used at high speed and high temperature, high melting point. So, you can go for very high speed, very low thermal conductivity and very low thermal expansion coefficient. So, stress, internal stress will be less because of low thermal expansion coefficient. Now, very low thermal conductivity or thermal insulation is good or bad is a very debatable question. It can be a good quality, it can be a weakness also. Let us examine the shortcomings or limitations of ceramics. Poor toughness that is brittleness, these tools are brittle. So, cannot stand high tensile stress bending stress and vibration, jerk. Poor tensile strength, it cannot withstand. Poor transverse rupture strength, it cannot withstand bending. Low thermal conductivity. Now, here you see low thermal conductivity is taken as an advantage and low thermal conductivity has been taken as a limitation. Why? Because what is required by a cutting tool? The cutting tool should be such that when the heat will try to enter from the chip to the tool, the tool should try to resist incoming of heat as far as possible. That is at the surface tool should be thermally non-conductive or less conductive. In spite of that certain amount of heat will enter into the tool, but as soon as it enters the tool material should allow it to disperse through high thermal conductivity. <coughs> so, we need cutting tool should resist penetration of heat at the entry but should disperse the entered heat throughout the core by high thermal conductivity. So, it is very peculiar. The tool material, same tool material needs thermal insulation at the surface and thermal conductivity at the inside. So, it is a dual character which will be later on you will find have been solved by coated, coated tool by coating. Now, the plain nitride, silic plain nitride cutting tools. Okay silicon nitride. Now, I talked about alumina Al 2 O 3, now silicon nitride Si 3 N 4, how is it different from alumina? It is also very good potential ceramic for cutting tool. Compared to alumina, nitride ceramics are is stronger in tension and compression, tougher, high fracture resistance, more thermally conductive. So, heat will be dispersed and shock resistant. So, it can withstand vibration and jerk. So, it can be used, this such tool can be used in inter light interrupted cutting or where there is a vibration in the machine tool, this tool material is good, much better than alumina. But this nitride is prone to built up edge formation in machining steels. So, it is partially soluble in steels and because of continuous contact, there will be a rubbing and heat generation. So, built up edge will form at the interface which will cause lot of problems in machining. 
beside that this uh, silicon nitride tools are difficult to sinter. So, the manufacturing process manufacturing of silicon nitride is more difficult than alumina processing and but this can be done only by hot pressing on reaction bonding and both of them are really costlier process. So, these are the advantage and disadvantage of silicon nitride tools over alumina. So, both are potential. So, both have got merits and demerits. So, this merits and demerits merits of silicon nitride and alumina need to be exploited in appropriate way in appropriate applications. Now, here you see the characteristics of alumina ceramic tools and the characteristic manufacture already told it is powder metallurgical process alumina powders say 1 to 10 micron size maybe a little bigger also micron size pure alumina will be or it will be uh, before use it should be ball milled to appropriate size particle size and then this will be compacted in suitable die with the help of punch maybe hot pressed or cold pressed and then this will be sintered at high temperature maybe at around uh, 1550 to 1650 degree centigrade even up to 1700 degree centigrade it can form of tools in what form of tools form it is available only inserts square triangular or other say polygon inserts and circular like button type this diagram shows the unique character of ceramics say alumina on one side is the hardness of the tool material versus the cutting temperature. Now, the cutting temperature you know it, it goes up to 400 to say may go up to 1000 degree centigrade it can go say 20, 40, 60, 80, 1000 like that. Now, here you see that the carbon tool steel that was used before high speed steel the hardness which was good enough at ambient temperature, but fell down rapidly with increase in cutting temperature and with increase in cutting velocity temperature will definitely rise. So, this tool was not suitable for machining at high speed. So, it could be used hardly up to 10 meter per minute in machining steel ordinary steel. Next came high speed steel you see the jump improvement. So, for same cutting temperature the hardness of high speed steel is retained ambient temperature this the difference in hardness is not much, but the hardness of high speed steel remains higher much higher than high carbon steel, but beyond 600 centigrade the hardness falls so much that it cannot be used anymore. So, the cutting edge becomes dull. What about carbides cemented carbides? Okay. Here the hardness is quite large and it droops slowly droops slowly with rising temperature. So, up to 800 degree centigrade or 700 degree centigrade these tools can be very comfortably used. What about ceramic? Say alumina ceramic, plain alumina ceramic. At ambient temperature, hardness is more or less same compared to carbides, but its hot hardness at high temperature, the hardness is retained in the ceramic, much better compared to the carbides. For which same material, mild steel, can be machined at higher speed by ceramic tool than carbides because high speed means high temperature. <laughs> now, here you see you know some typical uh, ceramic tool inserts the whites are they are the white grade and there is the one black here and some of them are pink sometimes the pink colors are also there, but what is what is the shape square rhombus triangular hollow solid and there are different button circular solid circular and hollow circular the various types are there, but you see that unlike carbide tools and ceramic tools there is no pattern like this, because it is difficult to produce the pattern and then it will uh, because if you produce the pattern or a positive break then the tool strength will fall because it is more brittle than carbides this high speed steel that is the limitation of ceramic tools. Now, what are the different types of ceramic tools available in the market? plain ceramics we will talk about plain ceramics say types and applications of alumina tools alumina ceramic tools presently available. So, I am not talking about 
this is a high performance ceramic or adverse ceramic which will be taken over next lecture. But what are the uh, plain ceramics those are used in the market available type 1, type 2 and type 3 there are 3 types. Type 1 the composition is alumina and little amount of some additives maybe say chromium oxide and some other materials very small amount it is the produced sintering process is cold pressed. So, under normal condition I mean temperature it is pressed so cost is not high. What is the color of this type 1 pink white or pink hardness medium medium means around say 1500 beakers hardness beakers toughness really low less application gray cast iron which is soft, but uh, it produces slight you know vibration because of discontinuity of the chip and this alumina can take that amount and cutting velocity is only 200 to within 200 to 250 meter per minute. Now, compared to high speed steel even carbide you can see that the cutting velocity has been 200 to 250 compared to 80 to 120 meter per minute for carbides and 20, 30 to 40, 50 for high speed steel. Now, what is the next one? This is really harder grade, but less toughness. Next one is alumina with or without additive. There is no additive, so it is supposed to be white, but because of hot pressing, sintering by hot pressing, that is during compaction, sintering is done together simultaneously. So, pressing is done at high temperature, sintering and pressing together. So, it colors become black. Hardness very good because of hot working, toughness that is also medium improves because of microstructure, application for steels and cast iron that means, it can withstand higher temperature and large force it can withstand. Third one which is another one this is a mixed ceramic is a mixed with tungsten carbide or titanium carbide which imparts toughness in alumina. So, alumina plus titanium carbide what amount 20 to 30 percent titanium carbide sometimes titanium nitride titanium, titanium carbonitride or mix of these materials are added into alumina basically for improving toughness. The hot pressed hot press so it is costly process the color is also black the toughness hardness is low because toughness is high toughness is very high because of the titanium carbide applications stronger steels and hard cast iron where the material is harder and there is a chance of fluctuation in the force then large amount titanium carbide has to be added, but because of less hardness less hardness the cutting velocity could be only 150 to 250 meter per minute. So, these are the three grades basically within this three categories there are a number of types in size shape uh, composition processing treatment post processing treatment and finishing by mechanical grinding all these things are there and there, but one thing that is ceramic tools are really brittle. So, in ceramic tools this is the carbide tools normally the two sharp cutting edge and this is the chip formed. Now, this edge is very sharp normally if it is high speed steel the stress will be stress and temp will be concentrated at this region all right and uh, there will be, but if it is high speed steel or even carbide this sharpness can be retained it will work but if it is a say ceramic cutting tool then this has to be negative rake so this is a wide wedge angle or at least the sharp edge will be beveled like this so, partly this will be positive break and at the end this will be negative break. So, the edges of the ceramic tool should be beveled. Of course, this width will be not much maybe say 0 0.2 millimeter to 0 0.3 millimeter and the angle will be around 30 to 40 degree only all right. So, this is one thing to be remembered either this has to be used with a negative break or compound break negative followed by positive break. Now, what are the limitations of plain ceramics? As I told you that ceramic tools are very good in many respects, 
say hot hardness, anti welding, anti diffusion, chemical stability, low cost is another factor, low cost, but it has got problems, some problems like lack of strength. Now, when it is a strength, not compressive strength, it is bending strength and tensile strength. Bending strength, transverse rupture strength is also low and toughness, fracture toughness is really very low because this material is as such brittle. So, they have to be handled carefully. And the thermal conductivity of such material is also low. So, the heat that is produced remains confined in the surface. So, a lot of temperature is generated and that can create the problems initiated by temperature or thermal shocks kind of thing. Now, what are the applications? Applications are because of the problems or limitations of ceramic tools as such, applications are restricted to uninterrupted machining of soft cast irons and steels. Now, interrupted machining like milling that needs you know material should be tough or fracture toughness because if the material is brittle and the tool is subjected to say vibration then it will break into pieces. So, this has to be since it is brittle it cannot be used in interrupted machining like milling or shaping it should be used in continuous machining like turning, boring and similar process boring, drilling, uh, end milling like that not uh, other milling. And this also cannot take large force. If you machine with a large depth of cut and large um, feed then it cannot withstand. So, force has also to be limited that means, it can machine cast iron, grey cast iron not very hard grade cast irons, soft grade cast irons and also steels is a very good for steels this ceramic tools because steels produce high temperature and tends to cause lot of diffusion and adhesion wear which really causes problems in carbide tools, but ceramic tools are very inert anti diffusive anti adhesive. So, for machining steels the ceramics are excellent. Now, the cutting velocity, cutting velocity though it is very high say 200 to 300 meter per minute, it is quite high compared to that allowable for cemented carbide tools that is carbide tools and high speed steel 200, 300. You remember that in high speed steel the cutting velocity for machining material like steel, my steel is hardly 30 to 50 meter per minute with cutting fluid. In carbides in machining steel could be 80 to 120 meter per minute, but in ceramic 200 to 300 meter per minute. So, as such that is very good, good improvement, good jump, but the point is that the velocity cannot be can cannot be more than that or less than that. If there is more than that then there will be lot of vibration because of high rpm and the tool will break because of brittleness and if you take at low speed then also problem arises. At low speed machining, machining is unstable, unstable uh, and at high speed it becomes stable. Stability means the cutting process is smooth, force remains constant, chip tool interaction, interaction remains steady, but in unsteady machining the chip tool interaction because of friction fluctuates, built up edges form and the forces fluctuate. Under the fluctuating force such brittle tool material are not good. Now, used in rigid machine tools there is another limitation strong limitation against you know ceramic tools. In one one hand ceramic tools had to be used only at low only within a small range maybe high speed, but the range should be very low maybe 200 to 250 maximum maybe 300 meter per minute. So, at low speed it cannot be machined, but during machining in industry for different configuration of size and variation in size dimension material of the workpiece. For same rpm the cutting velocity fluctuates varies from zone to zone of the workpiece. At certain point the diameter is high, at certain point the diameter is low because of the variation in the, uh, the diameter for same rpm the cutting velocity fluctuates, but this will not be suitable for cutting tools like ceramic and the ceramic tool will need the machine tool which has to be very rigid and rugged all right. 
If the machine is not very rigid and rugged, because of compliance, this will vibrate and this will fail by breakage. So this has to be used very carefully all the time. This was the problem till 1970. After 1970, you know, a new kind of ceramic tools have been developed called high performance ceramic, which has overcome these limitations of shortage of strength, toughness, transverse aperture strength, and fracture toughness. Even thermal conductivity could have been improved. So this all this high performance ceramic, and then all these things will be discussed in the next class. Thank you.